Okay, let's talk about how the heart beats or why it beats. The heart is capable of beating without an external input, say from neurons, like muscles, you know, you, you skeletal muscles require the NMJ to activate them. The heart does not require that because the heart has its own local, we call it generator of its own electricity. So let's see how, how that works. Okay, so it's called the heart's you know, conduction system. So in the heart, this is your heart. You have your right atrium, left atrium, and ventricles down here. Here, somewhere in the right atrium, usually in the front of it, is an area called the sinoatrial node. There's also another area right around here called the AB node. These two clusters of, of cells, or these, these, two, two, these two areas of the heart contain what's called pacemaker cells. These are cells that can spontaneously depolarize the threshold. They can spontaneously reach threshold which means that they can create their own action potential to generate an action potential, all right? The pacemaker cells. And so we have two areas of them, the SA node and the AB node. The SA node cells, SA node will pace the heart at about 75 beats per minute. While the AB node will pace the heart at around 50 beats per minute. So because this goes faster, this is, this is called the true pacemaker of the heart, the SA node versus the AV node. And the AV node takes over when the SA node is damaged, okay? So the SA is a real driver of, of, of the heart, heart rate. Now in, let's look next at how or, or what the actual potential looks like in these pacemaker cells, okay? so. Let's um, erase a little bit so go work higher up on the board. So let's say we start age scale over here, the voltage scale of around negative 60 here, negative 40. So at around negative 60, these cells drift up. And at, at around negative 40 millivolts, that, that's their threshold voltage, that's when they fire up. Come back down, repolarize, then drift up again, then fire again, come back down, drift up again. Okay. The point here is that when these cells come back down, they do not rest like that. They're always drifting back up to threshold to fire again. And so we're going to describe the different stages. So it's called a stage one, stage two. Stage three, okay. Stage one, okay, this is new stage two. Stage two is the depolarization phase of the action potential of your pacemaker cells, your pacemaker cells. Okay. So this phase, phase two, is caused by influx of calcium, okay, through voltage-gated CA channels. So voltage-gated channels let CA in to create the depot phase. This phase over here, phase three, of course, is your repo phase. Repolarization phase, okay, this one, is due as usual to potassium out through voltage gated channels. Okay. And then once repo is done around negative 65 or so, automatically we have channels here that open up. So you have a, 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 a small K efflux still going on. So K is still leaking out, but you have a bigger influx of sodium 
And so if you have more in a coming in than if you have more positivity coming in than leaving, the cell will drift back to threshold. So this this constant opening of these local channels in the membrane create what's called this this part is called your pacemaker potential. Pace maker potential is the change that happens once you return to around around 65 millivolts or so where the you have local gates open to let NA leak out leak into the cell to push it back to threshold and it's always happened so it, so, so these cells never rest they're always drifting back they always have a pacemaker potential going on to bring them back to threshold so I want you guys to know what the three phases are and what ions drive them, okay? So you have your pacemaker potential is phase one, your depot phase driven by calcium in, your repo phase driven by potassium out through both of the channels. And these are all BG channels that, that, that's driving the, the action potential of your pacemaker cells. Now we can, for at a moment, we'll look next at how these things change. So you know that the heart rate can go faster or slower, right? It's not constant. So if you run in a race, for example, it goes to 140 beats per minute. So what drives the heart rate up and down? Of course, that's done by your ANS system. So let's see how the ANS impacts on these pacemaker cells. So let's just um, try a different one. So let's first look at how the sympathetic works, okay? So ANS system, your sympathetic nervous system will release norepinephrine or even epinephrine at their second neuron, the post-ganglion neuron will release these chemicals. And then these chemicals will open up ligand gated NA channels. Let me show, show you how that works. So here is a typical, right? Like this, typical action potential of your drift back and up again, of your pacemaker cells, okay? So here, this is supposed to be the same, same thing, by the way. So normally here, this pit, normally this is driven by, again, sodium coming in. Okay, sorry, this is a calcium, by the way. So NA coming in is what drives it back. And you have a small K going out. So now when you release norepinephrine, this chemical opens up another, another channel. So now here you're gonna have both NA coming in from the usual, plus now CA as well. Because the NE, opens up CA channels in that part of the membrane. And so now this extra positivity coming in, so it's okay going on like that. This extra pos positivity coming in will more quickly bring the membrane to the threshold faster like this. So now instead of taking, taking this long to get there, it gets it this, this, more, this more quickly and then it fires like so. And again, quicker, fires. So now, you can, as you can see, you're having a faster rhythm because you're making the time required to get the threshold shorter because you have extra NA coming in. That's how you speed up the heart rate by opening extra uh, ligand gated channels with less CA in to more quickly depolarize the cell, the threshold, to for the fire faster, faster, faster. Then for the uh, sympathetic nervous system, it's a little bit different, simple, um, similar, similar idea. Sorry, simple, right? It's a para. So let's end the parasympathetic here. ACH, of course, is what's released by your vagus nerve. And that nerve, so, so then ACH will open up ligand gated K channels. So now, so this is your original here. Fire, back, drift. Fire, okay. So here before it was the K coming out like this, small K. Now with 
this happening to, 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 to you still have a small k coming out, but now you're gonna have extra k coming out of it, extra k from these lagging gated channels. And so now with the k opposing the Na, so now so now it will take longer. Take longer to get the threshold like that. Draw it better. So one second. So here. You're drifting fire down, drifting fire down, drifting. So now here you're gonna have by having so here the first drift is just say it's it's it's, it's NA in the little K out, right? So now over here, once you have power in play, you're not gonna have Again, K out, regular K out, regular NA in, and then you have extra K out from the line gated channels. And that, so, so, so since you have more K leaving than NA coming in, that will, will slow down. Slow down, it takes longer, longer to get the threshold. So then it fires here. Come back down, it longer. And fires again. Okay, so by so by slowing down the pit, the time required to get the threshold, you will slow down the heart rate the same way. Okay, that's how ANS affects your pacemaker cells to, to have an effect on how fast the heart beats. We'll pause there.